let's enjoy some custom food item and let's burn a custom fuel. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, Raven fans are back and tell once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom food item as well as a custom fuel item to our project right here. So it's going to be sort of a double whopper over here in one tutorial. As always, of course, there's going to be timestamps linked down below so you can jump if you only want to do the fuel item. If you only want to do the food item, you can, of course, do that. Let's see. We'll start with the custom food item. And for that, we actually need to define custom food properties. And to do that, we're going to go to the item package. We're going to right click new Java class. And this is going to be the mod food properties class. There we go. And then let's take a look. We're going to define the food properties. So this is going to be a public static food final and then food properties food properties over here there you go and this is going to be for our kohlrabi there we go and there's going to be a new food properties data builder and we're going to do that one and then we can call well all sorts of different methods as you can see first one here is going to be the nutrition we're going to put it at three then a saturation modifier of 0.25 f and then we'll also add an effect why the frick not and let's just see what kind of effect is this going to be so in the effect method, a new mob effect instance, and then passing into that mob effects, mob effects dot, and then you can basically choose the effect. Let's see for a kohlrabi, I think you would be, you would get invisible. Yeah, you'd go turn invisible for 400 ticks. And there is a, let's say a 20% chance of that happening. After that, a dot build. There's also a couple of other methods that you could call, right? And those include the fast method, which will then allow you to eat this food very fast. The using converts to, this would be, for example, if you have a stew, then you get a bowl back, right? That is what the using converts to method does. I mean, those are basically, and then always edible. Well, I mean, should be fairly self-explanatory, then it's always edible, right? I mean, that's uh, sort of, so that the name explains itself. If you want to take a look at the vanilla foods, press shift twice and look at the foods class, include non-project items right here, and you can see foods, and you can see all of the different food properties for each of the different foods that vanilla adds, highly recommend it to take a look at this so that then you can, well, more easily balance your own food and if you have all of those different numbers right here present. And you can also see things like, the, for example, you know, the Enchanted Apple gives you multiple different effects. You can, of course, also add multiple effects. That's not an issue at all. But that is the mod food property added. So we can now actually add the normal food that's going to be in the mod items class and that's going to be Pretty much just a normal item. So there's going to be a public static final registry object of type item. And I'm going to call this the call Rabi equal to the items deferred register register method over here. Call Rabi. And then a second parameter is going to be a supplier of a new item. So a normal item with new item properties. And here we simply want to call the food method and then pass in mod food properties call Rabi. And that is it. Now, in theory, this item can already be eaten with the specific properties that we defined in our mod food properties class. That's pretty cool. Now, let's add it to the creative mode tab over here. So this is going to be our kohlrabi. In this case, there we go. And then, of course, we need to go down to the assets and do the JSON file as well as the translation. The translation is very straightforward and same with the item model, right? We're just going to take one of the already existing item model JSON files, simply drag it into the same folder while holding control, changing the name to a kohlrabi and then changing the name to kohlrabi here as well. And then, well, we can copy over the texture, which of course is going to be available to you as well, including all of the code and everything that we've basically added right here. But in theory, this is everything that you need for a custom food. If you want to make your custom food a drink, very importantly, right? So maybe you have a custom drink over here, then you need to make a custom item class for that specific drink, right? So for example, a drink item. And inside of it, you want to overwrite the get use animation method over here and simply overwrite the animation use anim drink over here. So you want to return the use anim of drink and then you're good to go. So that's literally all you need to do for a custom drink in this case. So instead of a new item, it would then be a new drink item that you've created, right? That class. And there we go. But with that done, let's go into the game and see how it tastes. All right, fans, we're back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the kohlrabi has been successfully added to the game. And of course, I can eat it. And you can see, there we freaking go. So we can eat it. And now that I have, well, I'm no longer hungry. Now I can't eat it anymore. But if I were to you know, just run around a little bit over here, 
then you can see I can eat it again. And there we freaking go. We even got the invisibility over here. That was a 20% chance. Absolutely amazing. And that is a custom food item added to Minecraft. So let's continue and add the fuel as well. For the custom fuel item, we will need a custom item class, but you will find that it is very straightforward. So in our item custom package, we're going to right click new Java class called the fuel item class in this case. This will extend from the item class, making sure we choose the right one, net Minecraft world item over here. We'll hover over this, create constructor matching super, and then we simply need a couple of things. And the, those couple of things are a private integer or burn time. It's going to be set to zero. We'll then add an integer burn time as a parameter here in our constructor. I'm going to say inside of the constructor, this dot burn time equals not get breaking sound, but actually the burn time over here. So we're going to take the field that we have and set it to whatever we pass into the constructor and then overwrite the get burn time method, making sure we choose the one from the iForge item interface over here with the two different parameters. Very important that we do that. And then what we can do is we can simply return this dot burn time and that is our custom fuel item done. Like literally it. And you can reuse this as often as you'd like because we've made it so that you can pass in the burn time for each different item that you're creating. So let's just see how that's going to look like in the actual game. So if I were to go into the mod items class and I'm going to make the public static final registry object and this is going to be of item and this is going to be the Aurora underscore ashes just because why the frick not. Uh, and this is going to be items dot register and then Aurora underscore ashes. And then this is going to be a new, and that's the important thing, fuel item, right? Passing in new item properties. And then as a second parameter, we're going to pass in the burn time, let's say 1200. And there we go. And that's literally all you need to do for a fuel item in this case. It's pretty crazy. Now, of course, all of the different things we still need to do, right? We need to go through and make sure that this is added right here. So to the creative mode tab and then to the translation there we go. And then, of course, you know, when we get to the item models, right, and new item model over here, once again, simply dragging it into the same folder while holding control, like an already existing item model JSON file, changing the name of it and then changing whatever texture it points to. And then we can also copy over the texture, which, of course, is also going to be available to you. And then we have the fuel item added. And like I said, this class can be used however often you want, right? You can make a hundred different uh, fuel items if you so choose to and just pass in a different burn time and that's all going to work totally fine. So in that instance, let's jump into the game and see if it burns. Oh, I found it back in Minecraft. As you can see, the Aurora Ashes have been added to the game. And if I were to, well, just set it in there, you can see it both works both in a blast furnace as well as a normal furnace. So obviously no issues there whatsoever. And it's going to burn for 1,200 ticks. We're going to see in just a second the vanilla values for burn times for like vanilla fuels, right? We're going to take a look at that in just a second. But yeah, there you go. That is how easy it is to add a custom fuel item to Minecraft. Freaking awesome. To see the vanilla values in terms of burn time, press shift twice and we're going to look at the abstract furnace block entity, right? This one right here. And then we just want to scroll down a little bit until we find the get fuel method over here. And you can see here are all of the different values. So the lava bucket has 20,000 ticks that it basically well burns for or coal is 1600 and so on and so forth. So highly recommended to check this out. That is very useful, once again, for balancing purposes of your own custom fuels. As always, the code and everything is available down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, well, we'll talk about custom tooltips. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.